A couple of days ago, I made a video where I was ranting about how the previous 24 hours prior to that video, I had been having a really bad experience with Linux. And while the title of that video was somewhat quick clickbaity, okay, it was really clickbaity, but the point was, is that I had had just a horrible experience with Linux over the prior 24 hours. Prior to that video, just everything was going wrong. And I'm sure that by the end of it, if I had wanted to, I could have spent some time trying to fix the problems that I was having. A lot of the things that I was having go wrong after I had reinstalled Arch Linux were simply because I installed vanilla Arch Linux. And when you do that, there's always going to be dependency errors. Like when you install something, you're going to have to find the things that go along with the things that you installed in order for them to work properly. And when you don't install the proper dependencies or they're just kind of missing, shit goes wrong. It just happens, right? And the problem being is that I, by that time, I had spent so much time with things going wrong, I had no patience for it. So at the end of that day, I decided I was done with Arch Linux, at least for a while. I'm sure eventually I will go back. But I wanted to find a new distribution that was hopefully stable because I'm not as much of a Linux distro hopper as I used to be. Like, I am much more interested now in finding a distribution that just works really well, allows me to access the applications and programs and stuff that I need, and just lets me do my job without any frills. And used to be, that would be Arch Linux. Like, it had all the access to all the software that I'd want. And it was stable enough where it didn't piss me off. But after that day, I decided I was going to find something new and hopefully find a new home. And I think I found it. So I've hopped now to Fedora. Fedora 36 to be exact. And I've been on it now for a couple days. And I have some thoughts and I want to talk about those thoughts. But first, let me talk about why I chose Fedora. There are a couple reasons. First, Fedora has a reputation for not only being very stable, but also not being so far behind when it comes to bleeding edge software that you have to kind of pull teeth in order to get the latest stuff. And that's something that really is true about like Debian and Ubuntu. If you want the latest stuff, you kind of have to pull teeth in order to get it. Fedora doesn't have that problem. Most of the stuff that you're going to find on Fedora and the repos and Flatpak and stuff, that stuff has all been updated. And it's at least fairly recent, which is what I need. So Fedora kind of checked the box of being at least stable enough, but not so far behind like Debian. And that was kind of what I was looking for. Another reason why I decided on Fedora was that I am finally decided that it's time for me to give Pipewire another try. I hear from several of my fellow YouTubers that Pipewire is finally able to be used by regular people and I want to know whether or not that's true because I'm regular people and I just want to know whether or not I can use this without it messing up like it always has in the past like previously when I tried Pipewire always always like no exceptions something eventually goes wrong now some of that is me just not knowing what the hell I'm doing with Pipewire so that's something that I want to correct this time when something goes wrong I want to be able to at least look into it and see if I can solve the problem and it was also when I tried before, kind of early days. So hopefully, Pipewire treats me much better this time than it did the last time I tried it. We'll see how that goes. I'm going to give it the good old college try and see if this can actually be something that I use day to day and not have significant problems, which is something that I'm hoping for. So Fedora kind of checked those two boxes. I wanted to try Pipewire, and I needed something that's stable, but with recent software. And I think that given my experience over the last couple of days that Fedora is something that I can use long term. Now, don't quote me on it because something goes wrong and I can't solve it and I'm in a, one of those impatient moods. You guys know me. I'm much too eager to hop back to Arch. And like if there's a package that I need that I can't find and I absolutely need it, the AUR is going to be calling my name. It's going to be Matt, Matt, the AUR, we have that package. Yeah, um, that's possible. I mean... We're just being honest here. But I, th I think that Fedora has the possibility of being a place where I can spend a good amount of time with it actually being installed. And the reason why I say that is because my experience of the last couple of days has been actually pretty good. It has most of the packages that I need in the repos or in Flatpak or in Flathub. And 
over the last two days, everything that I've wanted to install, I've been able to install. Even things that where I actually had to build the package myself from source, I've been able to do that. I made a story on YouTube earlier today, I guess, where I talked about how the AUR had kind of become a crutch for me. When you have the AUR and have access to that broad library of software, you kind of lose the ability to properly build software. Like, I had no clue how to build, like, a Rust program. Like, I had done it before, but it kind of, like, it that skill had eroded, right? And same thing with, like, Python. Like, I knew how to use pip before, and I kind of had to relearn it now because I had forgotten that there are some dependencies that you need in order to use pip. And you can't just download pip on Fedora and expect it to work. There are a couple libraries that you have to install. I had forgotten that. So over the time that I've spent with Arch, my ability to remember those kind of things just kind of has eroded because I never really need, needed to do those things. You just use an AUR helper. It builds it for you. No matter what it's been, you know, needs to be built in, you don't need to worry about any of that stuff, right? So I've had a good time kind of relearning that stuff and I haven't had any packages that I've come across where I haven't been able to actually get it installed. So the hardest one so far has been Uberzug, which is a program that allows you to, to view images in the terminal. So like if you want to use image previews in Ranger, Uberzug is an option for you. I couldn't get that into install with pip out of the box and I had no clue what I was doing wrong. So after tweeting about it, someone said, hey, did you install the, the Python library that you needed? And I was like, no, of course I didn't do that. So I installed that and then it worked. So that was the hardest one that I've had. Now, I have discovered something that I had no clue existed. It's called COPR and it is a AUR-like repository for Fedora. I say it's AUR-like because it's much more like PPAs than it is the AUR. It's just really, really PPA-like for me. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, I don't really know what it's called, what it stands for. But basically what it is, is anybody can host their own repositories and you add them, just like you would add a PPA in Ubuntu, to your Fedora system. And then you can use DNF to install whatever's in that repository. So exactly like you would with apt with a PPA. You can add the repo, then install the program. The problem with COPR, just like a problem with PPA, is that a lot of that stuff is severely outdated. Like the Uberzug package that is hosted in someone's repo is two years old. And if you wonder what that cut was, that was my screens going to sleep because yes, I finally think I got that figured out, but that may be another video. The point is, is that, where was I? I have no clue where I was, but I guess it, it doesn't really matter. Is that, oh, the C COPR thing, the, 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 C the COPR repositories are just severely, severely outdated. At least some of them, the ones that I've found have been just not maintained. Let's just put it that way. And that's the problem with PPAs. That seems to be the problem with COPR. So I, I don't know that the COPR thing is going to be a solution for anything, unfortunately, because when you're dealing with that kind of outdated software, a lot of times it doesn't build because the software packages are looking for versions of libraries and stuff like that, that are either way far ahead now than they were when the, that package was published or they no longer exist or something. So that is a problem, which kind of makes COPR I'm not going to say useless because I have had some success with some programs downloading that way, but it's definitely a situation where it has some pitfall pitfalls, you know? So I have chosen Fedora and I'm using Fedora. I have installed i3 on it. You can actually, I can actually show you my i3 configuration file right here. Just like so. This is my i3 on Fedora. It looks like my i3 on Arch Linux because it's basically the same dot files. So it's not that, you know, it's not as if you're seeing anything new that you haven't seen before. Or that it has a nice Fedora wallpaper, which I looked up, which is cool. I've also installed DWM. So I've been playing around with DWM because I was thinking that maybe the problem with my screens going blank was i3 itself. I don't think that that's the problem anymore. I thought it was because it was the screen blinking was working fantastically in DWM for, I don't know, eight or nine hours. <laughs> and then this afternoon, it stopped working. And I don't know what's going on with that, but I think I got it fixed now. But like I said, that might be another video. Anyway, so that is it for this video. It's been a kind of a rambly video. It's not the video that I was planning on doing today. But my schedule for the week in terms of videos it was just completely blown up with the computer problems I was having. That one day where I was just everything went wrong, 
kind of just made everything that I had planned to do for the rest of the week in terms of the YouTube channel just kind of go away. <laughs> so I know I've promised an AV Linux video. I have part of that shot. Hopefully that will come on Saturday. So if you're interested in that, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you hit that like button. I really, truly do appreciate that if you've done that. Uh, you can, if you have thoughts on my switch to Fedora, if you are a Fedora user yourself, you can leave a comment in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. You can follow me on Twitter at the LinuxCast. You can follow me on all my social media networks and all that kind of stuff, including Mastodon. Those links will be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash LinuxCast, just like all these fine people. I would like to say how grateful I am to everyone who supports me on Patreon and YouTube. I can't even begin to express the words of gratitude that I would need in order to say thank you enough, if that makes sense. So thanks everybody who supports me on Patreon and YouTube. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.